Does uh, Benjamin Netanyahu need a war against Iran for his own personal political survival? You framed it in extremely personal terms. And it's fair to say that that's important. Um, But actually, when you look at the situation in Israel at the moment, where, and it's become, you know, something has changed in the air. Something is very clear that Israelis have the sense of defeat, which they haven't had until now. But they now they sense there is a defeat. They know that Gaza has been a defeat and that it's unlikely that they're ever going to uh, prevail as they would like in Gaza. They haven't been able to restore um, the displaced persons to their homes. They have not been able, if you like, to get the hostages. That's at a dead end on the hostages. So wherever you look, there is a, a, a defeat and the economy is tanking. And the sides, if you like, of the box are closing in on Israel. And so where is the way out for Israel? They need a diversion. They need something to get out of this. And that's where this great victory comes in. And the idea that they can score a great victory. And Netanyahu, for all these years, has always been, you know, target Iran. Iran is the great Satan that we must deal with. Uh, and this is... Um, and this is why I think, you know, that 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 we may see this uh, this uh, uh, this conflict actually escalate further and widen further in this time, even though everyone has been trying very hard to not allow that to happen. Um, but now it is really Israel that has a, the juncture in the road, the the fork in the road. Either it has to accept where it is now and assimilate a defeat, military defeat, a defeat of its deterrence, a political internal defeat, or it has to go all the way, Armageddon, war, Amalek. And the point is, we all look at this in sort of rational, extremely rational terms and say, well, it's not sensible to do that. But it's become increasingly you know, an eschatological war, a war about the end of times. And for Israel, you even hear them talking about it. Either it's got to be a great victory or or else we're talking uh, about some sort of complete uh, failure. Uh, and sort of the, the, the famous um, uh, example of, of the those um, Israelis who committed suicide on the mountaintop. So I think uh, it's not so much just his personal interest, although it is that, but it is also, secondly, um, the sense that Israel has got nowhere to go except escalation at this moment, unless it's prepared to accept defeat. So on Netanyahu's watch, October 7th occurred, either by indifference or, or intentionally looking the other way or incompetence. Uh, he promised that he would uh, crush Hamas. He hasn't been able to do so. He promised he would get the hostages mm-hmm. back. He hasn't been able to do so. Hamas is not a sophisticated uh, military. There are a lot of them, but they basically live in tunnels and they don't have uh, any uh, defensive weaponry uh, whatsoever. Uh, as we speak, I understand that uh, Ben the, the Israelis have such a sense of defeat that Ben Gurion Airport itself is deserted. No, nobody wants to go there this today. Um, why attack Iran? Um, uh, let me let me try and uh, Ten to, times the size of uh, Israel. It has a, a, obviously a much greater population and economic base and sophisticated offensive weaponry. Uh, uh, quite true, but the key has always been. And the reason for for doing this has been to try and persuade and draw the United States into attacking Iran's supposed nuclear weapons program. None of the Western intelligence services believe they have a weapon at all or even begun making a weapon. They are, if you like, 
a threshold, nuclear threshold state, but there's no evidence that they've moved to weaponization at all. But it has always been a theme. It was not only Netanyahu's theme, it was his father's theme, that you know, I- Iran is only about two months away from a nuclear bomb. We cannot allow Iran to have a nuclear bomb. And what I, I suspect, I mean, this is just my personal, my personal sense. What is Israel going to do now? What can it do now? Well, one of the things I was thinking of, let me be very clear to start with. Um, Iran's nuclear program, the parts that matter, are totally buried in tunnels deep inside mountains. They're not acceptable. Ehud Barak, who is a prime minister, has written that and said that quite clearly. It's too late to destroy the program by military means. It's over. They've done it. They're a threshold state. But what do you imagine? Supposing they decided to bomb Nantaz, which is not part of the program as such, but it's out in the open, and it's sort of associated with the nuclear program. It's got nothing to do. It won't set Iran back at all. But what happens if they tried to do that and then they told the world, look, we've set back Iran's nuclear program. There would be applause in the United States and Europe and in many areas and they would say, oh, well, that was great. And then possibly congressmen would start to say, well, you know, it's right. We need to do something about this nuclear program. We need to destroy it. And then you can try and see him trying to draw. I'm not going to say he's going to succeed in this. But I could see some tactic like that uh, uh, appealing uh, to him uh, after what is his experience last night in terms of um, the missile attacks. Right. How how, uh, badly uh, or how poorly uh, were the Iranian, did the Iranian missiles attack IDF assets? Well, first of all, Uh, You have to understand what Iranian objectives are, because otherwise people will get it wrong. But the Iranian objectives really have been, uh, first of all, to control the intensity. This has been the resistance objectives, to control the intensity of this war and to control the escalatory ladder, the, the steps up the ladder of escalation, and to manage that in such a way that it doesn't go to all-out war, because neither Iran nor anyone in the region wants a major war where, you know, Beirut is leveled to the ground or Tehran, civilian Tehran, is destroyed. So the aim of this was simply to do one thing, to reestablish deterrence. For this last period, um, Israel has been assassinating Iranians in Syria and in Lebanon, and then finally in their diplomatic premises in Damascus. And Iran wanted to send this message of deterrence. And of course, um, it's been misinterpreted widely in the West because, uh, first of all, the, the drones that they fired, and they made it clear that they weren't looking to do a major destruction in Israel, but to send a clear message of a new equation. What's the equation? The equation is, if you go on attacking Iran, in Iran, or Iranians outside of it, from henceforth, you will be attacked direct from Iran into Israel. That is the new equation. We will attack you inside Israel from Iran. That's what the purpose was. That's what they did. Now, all those drones, they take three and a half hours to arrive at their target. They're very slow moving. The cruise missiles go faster and the ballistic missiles faster still. So they mix these things up. The point is that the drones were put up to be shot down because those drones, just as we've seen in Ukraine and elsewhere, the drones are used to map out the air defenses of Israel. And so the Iranians will have got a lot of information about the air defenses and the capabilities by putting up these old, slow drones that take three hours to get there. So, you know, everybody knew they were coming. It was very clear when they started taking off that it would take that long. 
Now, they mix that with two things, um, cruise missiles, some of them uh, ground hugging and some of them uh, ballistic missiles. And uh, a number of the ballistic missiles broke through all the air defenses. They destroyed two air bases, or not destroyed them, but they landed in two air bases into an intelligence building uh, in Tel Aviv, the Air Force intelligence building from where the um, if you like, the attack in Damascus was coordinated, and also an electronic center on, on the Golan. Um, and there were no casualties, and the damage was not, um, you know, world-shaking, uh, but it sent a, a clear message, uh, and it said, we have the capabilities. Now, uh, in, the, in the newspapers, in the media, it says, oh, well, 99% of them were shot down. I mean, that's nonsense. 99% of the drones were shot down because they were put up to be shot down so that, um, first of all, it, it gives cover for the other missile systems and also because it allows the Iranians to map, if you like, the ground of uh, Israeli air defenses. Israeli air defenses were not able to stop the ballistic missiles. They know that. They will go on with the propaganda, and the West is pushing this propaganda very strongly in order to try and deter Netanyahu from making uh, a strike against Iran in retaliation. 